Today we're going to be taking a look at the Mintian Beagle Cam version 2. Hello everyone, Chris here. Late last year, Mintian sent over the Beagle Cam. It's a compact webcam with a web server running on it you can plug directly into your 3D printer. Now, it's a great option for folks that don't have a permanent location for their 3D printer with a webcam that's always available. You can just set up your printer, add the Beagle Cam, and start taking really cool time-lapse footage. Now, enter the version 2 of the Beagle Cam, Mintian sent over for us to check out. It has a few new features, but I thought we'd just go over how the Beagle Cams work, look at the new features like manual focus, that's a big plus from the original version, and just see what you're going to get for around $90 US. So, let's start by taking a look at what's in the box. So here's what you're going to get if you purchase a Mintian Beagle Cam version 2. You get some stickers, which is always important a quick start guide, the version 2 of the camera. It really doesn't look much like a dog anymore. That was one of the cool bonuses to the original Beagle Cam, but we can let that slide. It comes with a tripod and an adapter so that you can adjust the camera, a power adapter, and a cable to power the camera, as well as one to get set up on your 3D printer. So now you know what you're going to get with the version 2 of the Beagle Cam. We are going to get it set up and working here in a moment, but it's important to remember that these are just for Marlin-based 3D printers. It's going to work on your Perusian machine, your standard Ender 3, but if you're running RepRap or Clipper, you're out of luck at the moment. I hope that they start integrating Clipper. That seems like a fairly easy thing to do, but right now it's just Marlin machines. If you need to know if your printer is compatible, they do have a pretty exhaustive list over on their website. So let's go ahead and get everything set up. So the things you're going to notice right out of the gate for the version 2 is the form factor, but you do get a tripod. That was always one of the tricky things with the version 1, was getting it set up just right with that little stand to be able to look at whatever 3D printer you might want to look at. Also it does come with a 32 gig SD card. These cameras are very straightforward to use. After you power it up, it will actually tell you everything you need to do. The power is over here on the side, it is USB-C, and then your printer connection is going to be here on the back. So we'll go ahead and plug it in, and let it start telling us all the steps we need to take to get everything all set up. The first thing you'll hear is the camera is ready for the Wi-Fi connection. You will need the BeagleCam app to get it set up on your phone or device. There is a QR code here in the manual so that you can download that app, but it's pretty easy to find as well. Here we are in the BeagleCam app. I already have an account from the first BeagleCam. You do have to create one through their site. It's very easy to get set up. They don't collect a whole lot of information. But we're just going to get our device set up, so we'll just hit the plus sign. We have version 2. And we're going to do QR code scan configuration. We have already heard the voice. Your device should be on the same network that you want your camera on. You can just plug in your password. When you hit next, it's going to generate a QR code that you can show to the Beagle Cam that has your Wi-Fi information in it. We'll show it to the Beagle Cam. We did hear the beep. We'll check the box and hit next. Successfully connected to the Wi-Fi. The camera has announced that it's successfully connected to the Wi-Fi, so we're ready to start using it. We'll hit Beagle Cam version 2, and there's our camera feed. Now we can cable up to our 3D printer. Now it is important to note, the cable that they gave me to hook up the printer is a micro USB. The Prusa here is actually USB-C. So you might need an additional cable depending on what printer you have. So we'll cable up to the back and then the other side to the main board on our printer. And I have to say the tripod is already much easier than the version 1. One feature that I do really like about the BeagleCam setup is you don't always have to use the cell phone app. You can get it from a web browser on your PC. And I prefer this in a lot of ways, especially when making videos, because it's much easier to do a screen share than it is for me to show you my cell phone screen. To do that, all you need is the IP of the camera. So you can go to settings, this cog up here on the top, go to camera information, and your IP address is going to be listed there in the middle. Mine's 1.8, so now we can just open up a web browser and use it from there. You will have to log into the BeagleCam. 
the account is always admin and the default password is also admin. You can change that if you wish in settings. And it's pretty much all the same features on this web version in the browser based as it is on the cell phone version. And like I said before, there are quite a few different printers that BeagleCam supports directly. There might even be a few that aren't in the list that it's going to support, but pretty much anything that's Marlin based. Our Prusa machine here, if we just go to settings, you can expand printer and select which one you have. Prusa, they don't have the Mark IV, but the biggest thing that you want to look for is the printer size, so it knows where to move the print head when it's taking snapshots. The Mark III should work just fine. We'll just hit save. And then back on the dashboard, we can just hit connect. We'll make sure everything's working with the printer correctly. Let's just home X and Y. And the printer's moving as expected. And you should be ready to start taking time-lapse footage. You have some options you can set. But one thing I do like to do with these is they make firmware updates often. So we want to make sure we're on the newest version. So if you go to settings, firmware upgrade, just make sure that it says it's on the latest version. You can always go to the Mintian site and look for BeagleCam firmware and confirm that the newest version is on your camera. It looks like we're all up to date. If you're not, the camera will be able to check that and there'll just be a button here that says update now. It's really easy to do. One other setting to note is the different time-lapse modes that you can do. Normal time-lapse mode is just like any other time-lapse. It's going to show the printer's movements. You can switch to clean time-lapse. It works like Octolapse does. It moves the print head out of the way, takes the snapshot, then returns to the print. You do have a lot of settings here you can change up. Maybe you're having some stringing, something like that. You can make those retraction speeds a little different to try to alleviate those issues. Default settings are going to work pretty good for the most part. This is the mode I do prefer. The UV time-lapse, that works with their UV sensor, so you can do things like SLA 3D printing, when it takes a snap to cure the resin, the sensor notices that and it takes a snap for the time lapse as well. And then timer based. You can just use this as a regular old time lapse camera. You don't have to have a 3D printer to kick off the snapshot. You can put in whatever duration you want and just let it start. But we'll stick with clean time lapse video. If we head to the printable files to list, we can go ahead and upload our G code and then we can load it. Once it's been loaded, you can use your 2D review or your 3D review. You can even read the raw G code right here in the window if you wish. Remember you do have the option too that night vision will always be on and you can change that setting from black and white to color if you wish. The color does actually work pretty well and it's helpful in case you turn off the lights by mistake when you need to monitor your print or take a time lapse. It still puts out a pretty cool version. But basically that's all there is to it. We're ready to start that G-code and it'll start taking a clean time lapse for us. So the version 2 cam has pretty much the same feature set as the version 1 cam did. They're both 1080p, 25 frames a second. You do get that night vision with the color option and they're pretty much compatible with any Marlin based 3D printer. Now for the version 2, you do get that manual focus and the tripod. It makes it a lot easier to get a nice crisp image than on the version 1. Also, they've upgraded the Wi-Fi on the version 2. You can now do 2.4 and 5 gigahertz. Also, they've upped the RAM up a bit. The original one had 512. This one has 1 gig. It does make that web interface a lot snappier. But you have a lot of the same feature set, as I said before. You can do remote monitoring via the cell phone app wherever you go, as well as the same modes for time-lapse. The added price tag on the version 2, again, is around $90 US. The version 1 is still around $65 US. I think they're both great options for the casual 3D printing time-lapse user, but weigh those features out. You might not need them. The version 1 might still be good for you. Now, let's try out a time-lapse and just see how it looks. And remember, we're doing a clean time-lapse, so it's going to move the tool head out of the way, depending on how you have it set or what printer you're using. The defaults for the Prusa, they're going to move the X all the way over to the left and pretty much the bed all the way to the front. So you want to make sure you position your camera accordingly. I'm going to put in my stunt benchy here so I can use my manual focus to make sure the, the image on the print is nice and clean. From here, we can just go ahead and adjust the front of the camera. You can just turn it left and right until you're happy that you're focused on what you need to be. 
And once you're satisfied, all we have to do is go to our printable files list and print our G-code. After you remove your stunt benching, we'll start the print from the printable files list. And when your prints are complete and you're ready to get your time lapse, you just come back to the web page, go to time lapse videos, and you can download them. And just as a bonus side tip, you can always take the SD card out of the Beagle Cam and mount it on your computer. All your G code is going to be in the main directory, and then if you go into TLV, there are all your time lapse videos as well. So you don't have to transfer them over the web if you don't want to, you can just grab them off the card. So there it is, the Beagle Cam version 2. Now the feature set on the version 2, as far as the camera is concerned, it's a lot like version 1. They have upgraded to manual focus, they've added some memory which makes it just a little bit speedier in the web interface, but the biggest feature add is the tripod for me, because it's just a lot easier to get it focused in on the print when you're trying to do these time lapse. Remember, some features might not work with the Beagle Cam as well, like power loss recovery. If you have that on your printer, the Beagle Cam's not going to know how to handle that. Also, it might be interesting to see some AI built in the Beagle Cam, so maybe it can help you detect failures. So hopefully that's coming to the Beagle Cam very soon. All in all, the Beagle Cam version 1 is still available for $65, version 2 is $90. If I was doing something like this, just the added features the version 2 has, I'd go that direction because it's not that much more money. So, hopefully this was helpful. The Beagle Cam was provided from Mintion. Just for this review, no money has exchanged hands, and all opinions expressed are my own. That will be it for today, and I'll see you really soon on the next one.